Hi, in this video, we will review chapter six, Clean Code by Robert Martin. This chapter is about getting a deeper understanding of objects and data structures. Let's start with taking an example. On the left hand side, we see a person object. And on the right hand side, we see two different forms of person data structures. So in summary, an object is is one which has private fields, uses data abstractions, and exposes only behaviors. Like in this case, we see that it has first name, last name, phone number, which are private. And then we have methods or jump and speak, which are behaviors. So these are public methods that are exposed. So it, an object-oriented code, in this case person object, uses data abstractions and various other object-oriented principles to create good objects. Whereas data structures are pure value-holding entities. In this case, we see that there are three public variables in the first data structure. In the second one, we see that there are three private variables, but it still has public getters and setters. It's still a data structure, whereas it's exposing fields instead of exposing behavior. So that's the key difference. Now let's take a look at what are some of the advantages using raw data structures with procedural code versus using objects and object-oriented code. Starting with procedural code, we see that there are two, in this example, we have class square, class rectangle, all public fields. And there is another class geometry, which has behaviors. In this case, an area. Let's say you want to take an area of square and rectangle. And if you're using raw data structure objects, then in this case, all you have to do is check for every instance of an object and implement the behavior area. And now let's say you want to add a new data structure, circle. Adding a new data structure, circle, requires you to change each of those um, methods, in this case area and paint. Each of them now has to check what is the instance of this given object. Is it a circle? Is it a rectangle? Is it a square? So adding a new behavior, in this case paint methods, seems easy. But when we had to add a new object data structure, every method had to change. So we had to go and figure out like which are all the methods that are using, potentially could use circle object. So adding new data structures is hard in procedural code, but adding new behavior is easy, as we saw. One place, as long as you know all of the objects that you need to provide implementation for it, apparently seems easy, but it's still not easy. That's why we have object-oriented code. Let's take a look at how we would write the same thing in object-oriented, using some of the principles of object-oriented code, like data abstractions, law of Demeter, so we start off with implementing an interface, in this case with one behavior, area, in interface shape, which exposes area. And if you have an object called square or rectangle, it would implement shape, it would have private variables, and it will implement those behaviors. So if you want to add a new entity like circle, if you want to add a new object, it's easy. All you have to do is implement shape and implements its own methods. Nothing changes. But if you add a new behavior to the interface shape, like draw, that is apparently tricky because now all of a sudden you have to implement in every object that implements shape. But it's at least much better because the IDs can tell you where are all the implementations missing and you'll get errors that you that you would have to implement some of those methods. Although the change is there, but it's manageable change. 
it's much, much better than procedural code where you probably have to guess which all places those behaviors had to change. In this case, your IDEs will tell you. While we are on this subject of objects and data structures and business objects, let's take a look at some of the terms used. Value objects, plain old Java objects, data transfer objects, business objects. Value objects, you can think of them as pure value objects, meaning they just hold value, like Java Lang, int Java Lang integer, string. They just hold a single value. Plain old Java objects are a collection of value objects, meaning they have multiple value objects, and they are a collection of them. So a given object could have integer, string, etc., etc. Then they are plain old Java objects. Let, let's assume that they just have that. A data transfer object or a Java bean or an active record has everything that a plain old Java object has, meaning all of the collection of values, but also provides for storage and retrieval, like save and find methods, which allow it to access and mutate objects. But still, they do not e expose behavior. So Value objects, plain old Java objects, and data transfer objects are still considered data structure objects. And you use them wisely. Business objects are regular object-oriented objects which expose behavior. They model real-world entities. The law of Demeter is very, very useful as a principle of least knowledge in object-oriented programming, which helps in really understanding for a given method M on an object O, what are some of the methods that can be invoked? And with the principle of least knowledge, or it provides for loose coupling, when you don't really need to know the implementation detail of your objects, objects, or the methods, methods, but just one level deep. So a method M in an object O can expose, according to law of Demeter can access the parameters that are passed to the methods, the objects created within the method, the objects method, the objects instant variables, and the objects global variables in scope of M, M being the method. So simply put, use only one dot. That is, you know, if you write a dot b dot method, it breaks the law of Demeter because now you need to know what B's methods are within A. As an analogy, when one wants a dog object to walk, one does not command the dog's object's legs to walk. Instead, one commands the dog object, which then commands its own leg objects to walk. So this allows for loose coupling. You can change things quickly. Implementation details can be abstracted. Helps in writing better code. A lot of references that I came across uh, in writing this slides. Again, this is chapter six, review, clean code, Robert Martin, great book, highly encourage getting this book. Thanks.